Appreciate you clicking on this video, my movie peeps. A CinemaCon is currently happening right now in Las Vegas. And like I have done with the past couple of CinemaCons, I am going to be spending this week breaking down every panel and telling you what was revealed. A lot of the times the trailers, clips, and footage that gets shown don't get released to the public, but the people who do attend put out descriptions, and I'll be reading those to you in my nice, smooth, sexy voice. The juice was loose, and Jenna Ortega screamed. You're gonna want to hear it. So be sure hitting that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, especially this week, because I'll be breaking down every panel from each studio, and you're not gonna want to miss them big reveals. All right, so Warner Brothers kind of had an okay panel. I was honestly hoping they would talk about a couple of other movies more, but I understand maybe why they didn't, since they're in such early development, and most of the focus of these panels is to talk about the movies releasing this year. So with the first movie they started talking about was the upcoming Mad Max Furiosa movie. Now I'll spend much more time on the newer things that were revealed but some of the things that were revealed about Furiosa that we didn't know about is that unlike Mad Max Fury Road where that movie took place through the course of three days Furiosa is going to take place over the course of 12 to 16 years the movie is going to be divided into three sections following Furiosa's life Chris Hemsworth George Miller and Anna Taylor Joy were on stage just gushing about how much they loved working on this movie and they closed things off in that panel with an extended preview of Furiosa that people are describing is more just like a elongated trailer. It wasn't a specific scene, it was just a bunch of different scenes and clips of the entire movie, about five to seven minutes long. From there, they decided to talk about the two different Shyamalan projects we're getting this year. One is called The Watchers, that is actually coming from M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, Aishana Shyamalan, and they just revealed an extended trailer of the one we already got, where it's a group of four strangers stuck in this one location in the middle of the forest that are being watched by an unknown entity or group of entities having to figure out how to survive and get out of this situation. It for sure has got me interested from the first trailer we saw, but the thing that I was actually most curious to hear about that does sound awesome was M. Night Shyamalan's own movie. This is the movie Trap, which will be his first big studio horror movie in a long time. The past couple of M. Night Shyamalan movies he's made, he financed himself with his own money because other people didn't want to give him money, which only just makes me respect M. Night Shyamalan more. And wait till you hear the premise and footage that they showed about this movie movie. So we have heard rumors that this movie Trap was going to take place within a concert. And that's all we really knew. But then here's a description of the footage. Trap, a suspense tale set mainly inside a pop concert taking place at a huge stadium. Josh Hartnett played a father who takes his daughter to see a singer named Lady Raven. They have floor seats, which is basically his daughter's dream come true to see one of her favorite artists so close. Josh Hartnett leaves his daughter to go to the bathroom and notices a lot of police outside of the venue. He asks someone working at a merch booth why there are a bunch of cops posted everywhere the worker creepily tells him about a killer known as the butcher who's known to kidnap and chop up fans it's revealed that this whole concert is a trap to finally capture him and bring him to justice Josh Hartnett with a creepy knowing smile looks at the camera implying that he is the actual butcher killer who is now devising a plan to escape the concert with this information in true Shyamalan fashion it's a matter Massive twist within a twist. That sounds like one thrilling movie and I cannot wait to watch it. I don't love every single M. Night Shyamalan movie. I have my issues, but time and time again I say I look forward to his movies because they always bring something new. And a movie here about this killer played by Josh Hartnett who is at a concert just trying to have fun with his daughter only to realize he's trying to be captured by the cops. That sounds like it could be awesome. I can't wait till we actually get to see that footage, but that got me excited. Next up here they talked about Robert Pattinson's upcoming movie Mickey 17 directed by Bong Joon-ho who's most notably known for directing Parasite. Now there was actually already a little bit of drama with this movie because this film was originally set to come out this year in 2024 but for some reason Warner Brothers decided to move it to January of 2025. Whether it's because they don't believe in the movie or they think it will get Oscar buzz so they want to move it closer to Oscar season. And although this was a movie I was already looking forward to the trailer description and footage is not at all what I expected. Let me go into reading it here for you. The movie goes Robert Pattinson plays a common man named Mickey with a nerdy American accent who signs up to be an expendable in the future. He travels to a distant planet and space station doing handiwork but the caveat is that he's expected to die doing these difficult missions. Each time he dies a new clone is made and then given a new assignment. The title of the movie draws from this as he dies 17 times in the plot. Everything goes well with Mickey getting eaten 
eaten and chopped up into different pieces across space, things take a turn when two clones get made at the same time, Mickey 17 and Mickey 18. Now just listening to that and even on your own going to watch the little teaser trailer they dropped way back when, you would think this is kind of a serious movie. It'll have some Oscar buzz, Robert Panson can showcase off his acting ability, but uh, all the reactions from this footage say that the movie is a lot goofier and sillier than they were expecting. That it almost feels kind of cartoonish and a bit absurd, not serious at all. And Robert Panson is having like a goofy accent the entire movie. To me, that just makes it much more fun. Especially with that idea of him playing a guy who's meant to die every other day with a new clone popping up. It's almost like a Looney Tune thing happening there. So it looks like this movie is going to be a lot weirder and unique than you might have thought. It's not going to be all that serious. And maybe this could be the reason why Warner Brothers and the executive saw it, didn't understand it, and were like, this is silly and dumb. Put this in January. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. It might be an experimental thing, but that was not what I was expecting. From that first little teaser, I thought the movie was going to be kind of a straight up serious sci-fi movie but turns out it's a little goofy from there we got the smallest little update with james gunn and the dc universe although it is not a lot guys but that was expected like i mentioned in my preview video when i talked about the upcoming side flick i knew james gunn would not be there in person to talk dc or even superman instead it said that he just sent in a video where he talked to the audience thanking them for helping him out with guardians of the galaxy 3 and making that a success and then promising that he'll be at cinemacon next summer to promote the summer of superman attendees there did say that he showed off the actual superman logo the way it's supposed to be seen and that it is a bright red and gold color so anybody who was worried from that first look photo james gunn showed off a couple of weeks back it's not going to look that dull it's said to be a bright red and gold from there james gunn passed it off to peter safran the co-chairman at dc studios where then he showcased a trailer for an upcoming christopher reeves documentary titled superman the christopher reeves story this is supposed to be a documentary kind of retelling Christopher Reeve's life specifically when he got in his accident that paralyzed him and how he found new life in his situation. The trailer for the documentary is said to be so moving and powerful that people were crying when watching it. So that's something I'm going to be looking forward to when that gets released. But no other updates on the DCU, unfortunately. From there, they were given an exclusive look to Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. And you guys know around here, number one Beetlejuice fan. I have loved this property since I was a fetus in the womb. And from the sounds of it, it looks like Tim Burton's going to deliver on that classic practical effects filmmaking. The description of the footage goes as it begins the same way as the initial trailer that's already been released with Jenna Ortega riding on a bike into town. Cut to Jenna Ortega finding an ad paper promoting Beetlejuice. Winona Ryder dressed in black says, I can't believe I'm doing this. Beetlejuice, 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 then cutting to a montage which teases new information on the plot. Lydia, the living and the dead, can they coexist? That's what they're gonna find out. She is seen in Beetlejuice's office in a plaid dress with her mouth stitched up. Some claymation is shown as well as the iconic sandworm. Jenna Ortega is seen in a white dress and heading to the place of the dead. Another description of this trailer I wanted to point out that highlights some of the more practical effects going on in this movie said this, they weren't joking. So many of these these gags and jokes are executed through practical effects. Michael Keaton rips his belly open to reveal hundreds of snake puppets. An animatronic Beetlejuice head with its eyes popping out. Is Tim Burton cooking here? This right here is getting me so dang excited. I can't believe I was ever a Beetlejuice naysayer. Things like this totally excite me. There is just something so off-putting sometimes about a completely CGI effect. I understand there's times where that needs to be done, like the Planet of the Apes franchise. It doesn't really hinder my enjoyment of those movies there, but with something like Beetlejuice and the stylized look and putting together so many different versions of practical effects from like claymation, stop motion, actual prosthetics being used, like that's just exciting, so I can't wait to see this footage. And then the panel ends with showing off the Joker 2 trailer, but before talking about that, after they showed the Joker 2 trailer, they had a couple of actors and directors kind of just give their thank you to the CinemaCon people for being there from like Final Destination Bloodlines and Jack Black's The Minecraft Movie where he did give a small update. Although we didn't get much, we did get this. Jack Black says the Minecraft movie will be a new kind of blockbuster. Don't panic. The comedy in this movie will be much better crafted 
than that. And you know what? Of course, the person involved in the movie is going to praise it and say nice things like that. But here, I a thousand percent believe it. You guys have heard me say, I only have a base level knowledge of Minecraft. I understand there's a lot of huge fans out there, but the thing that genuinely got me excited for this movie, other than Jack Black, was the director, Jared Hess. This is the man behind Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre, some of the funniest movies I've ever seen, so quotable. I know this man's sense of humor is actually top peak quality. And so with Jack Black specifically calling out the comedy in this movie that it's going to be great, oh, I believe it. I just wish we were able to see some of that movie, but uh, I guess that'll be next year's CinemaCon. But okay, getting on now to talk about the Joker 2 trailer. Oh my hadoodle, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I did not want a Joker 2. I thought that first Joker movie was really well done. I felt like Todd Phillips maybe took a little too much inspiration from a couple of Martin Scorsese movies or other classic films where it didn't feel that original and like it really just wasn't being itself. I know there's people who flat out love that movie, but I just couldn't get to that level of loving it. I just ended up really liking it. Uh, this trailer for Joker 2, I am having my jaw to the ground. It looks beautiful, cinematic, and much more original than that first movie. For one, I do have to get stigma out of the way, where it looks like Harley Quinn, played by Lady Gaga, is not going to be the Joker's therapist in here. And the Joker doesn't seduce her, manipulates her, and ends up making her fall in love. No, she's just already another crazy person in the asylum with him. But comic book movies change things all the time, so I'll just have to let that go. Um, It is the shots, the visuals, the cinematics, the cinematography in here. It all looks beautiful, man. Man? There are so many standout moments where the camera flips perspectives, tell you what the Joker sees, what Lady Gaga sees, and even the way they're going about the musical aspect of this movie, which has been kind of confusing, Joker 2 is not really going to be a musical. It's going to be a movie with a lot of music in it. Some people have called it a jukebox musical, where it's just going to have popular songs that have already existed and just be heavily integrated into the movie to the point that the characters might sing it and dance to it, but it's not a traditional musical and you get that feeling with the trailer here but yeah this is probably one of the best trailers of the year put out so far i was floored even that ending shot with the joker just talking to harley quinn through that see-through glass and she puts the smile and then joaquin phoenix lines up with it and smiles it i was like dude that is cinema. This movie looks like it is going to be breathtaking and amazing and outdo the first movie, in my opinion, by a long shot. Hopefully it lives up to all these visuals it's portraying on screen and the story is actually worthwhile. But as someone who really could care less if there was a sequel to this, I am loving what I am seeing here. But anyways, guys, that is just day one of CinemaCon and the Warner Brothers panel. Let me know what your favorite announcement was, what your favorite little detail that got revealed, if there was more you were hoping for, that got shown and also stay tuned to the channel when i break down all the other panels happening this week don't forget to like subscribe follow me on twitter at 3c films or on tiktok at 3c films but as always i'm chris take care